Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to clean a carburetor on a two-stroke leaf blower. Don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on the link in the description below. Be sure to also check out my other social media pages such as Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This particular leaf blower I am working with here today is a Poulon Wild Thing model number WT200LE blower vacuum combo. Removal processes and styles will vary between accessing the carburetor and carburetor disassembly procedures. Over time, the carburetor can become clogged either by a poor air filter or dirty fuel. This will cause various issues such as hard starting, poor running, decreased performance, and poor fuel economy. First start by removing the air filter cover. On this model, it has two T25 Torx screws which need to be removed. Then the filter cap and filter pop straight off. The carburetor will be next. Here we have two 532 inch Allen head screws which hold on both the plastic cover and carburetor. Depending on the design of your unit, it may or may not have two fuel lines. If it does, do not mix them up. One will be for the main supply for the carburetor and the other for the primer bulb. There may be some fuel present in the lines, so have a cup handy to catch any of the excess fuel. Work in an area where you don't risk losing any small pieces from the carburetor during the disassembly process. First, removing the metal cap on the diaphragm, which is held on by four small Phillips screws. You may find the diaphragm slightly stuck, so be very gentle when removing it off, as it can rip. Sometimes you can find these extremely dried out or cracked, therefore they will need to be replaced. This one is in still good condition. Replacements can be purchased from your local small engines dealer, sometimes a hardware store, or online. Next, remove the pivot holding the needle into place. This will be held in by one small Phillips screw. Be sure not to lose the spring in this process as well. Moving on to the opposite side of the carburetor, remove the primer bulb that is held in with two small Phillips screws. Primer bulbs can also dry out over time and crack, which in turn will need to be replaced. Replacement parts, just as mentioned earlier, can be purchased from your local small engines dealer, sometimes the hardware store, and online. Here you will find another diaphragm style gasket which has controlled valves. Again, these can deteriorate over time, therefore not functioning correctly. Replacement parts can be purchased at the places I have mentioned previously. Also make note of the orientation, as it does make the installation process much easier. Finally, we'll be removing the high and low speed jets. Some other models may only have a low speed jet. If you want to use the existing setting, count the number of turns until it stops when tightening the two jets up before the removal. As a standard though, it will be one and a half turns for the high speed jet and three quarters of a turn for the low speed. This will get you started, but your carburetor will require some tuning as it won't run correctly. Depending on your model, you may be required to use a special screwdriver to remove these jets. For this model here, I am using a spline tool, which can be purchased online at a small engine supplier. Here I'll be using a throttle body carb and choke cleaner made by Permatex which can be purchased at any local auto parts supplier or hardware stores. Only use a carburetor specific cleaner as this won't damage any of the components associated with the carburetor yet clean it very effectively. This cleaner specifically cuts back any residue or build up fast and easily and doesn't leave any residue behind. In the past I have found some cleaners to leave a residue behind which can cause problems afterwards. It is best to apply the cleaning product in a bucket or large pan so the product doesn't spray around the surrounding areas. Here I'll be using an oil drain pan. I would highly recommend wearing safety glasses because there is various passages in the unit. When spraying in an orifice, some of these can be directed back at you or the product may not fully pass through an orifice and mist back towards you. I do recommend wearing latex gloves as well to reduce any chance of cleaner irritating your skin. For the outside, we can use a toothbrush to help cleaning any of the buildup debris off. Start by applying the cleaner to the outside, washing away any dirt, then move on to the inside, and finally moving on to the passages. It is best to use something to push through the passages such as fishing line. You can also use torch cleaning tips as well, but you must be extremely careful with these as these do have a slightly abrasive surface and can increase the size of any of the orifices, especially in the brass components, therefore damaging the accuracy of your carburetor. Give the unit a final spray down and clean the adjustment needles, then allow everything to dry. Once done, reassemble the carburetor. As for the settings on the jets, you can set them to what they were previously, as mentioned earlier, or they could have been possibly wrong. Therefore, we'll be using a generic setting to get the engine started, which will be three quarters of a turn for the low speed jet and one and a half turns for the high speed jet. Both jets need to be screwed in all the way and then backed off until the appropriate setting. If you find any seals that need replacing between the carburetor and engine block or intake manifold, this would be a great time to replace those as well. Again, those can be purchased at any local small engines dealer, hardware store, or online. This concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.